What makes a good railway station? I've often asked myself this over the years. Now you might think that living in Canada or honestly anywhere where rail travel isn't that predominant, that it wouldn't matter much what makes a good rail station or a bad rail station. But the truth is, the things that make a good rail station also often make a good transit stop or a good subway station. And at the same time, the shortfalls of a rail station can be the same as the shortfalls of a bus stop. Now I've made videos about all kinds of stations and infrastructure, but you don't need to live in Berlin or Shanghai or Mexico City to care about your local railway station. Everything is relative. A small railway station with little service that is nice is still a nice railway station. And a large railway station that has a lot of service but is poorly designed is not nice. Now people often ask me how they could get involved with helping making transit or sustainable transportation better in their communities. And one of the best ways is to help advocate for a better station or local bus stop. But to do that, you need to get a sense of what makes for a good station. So let's break it down. If you're not already, make sure to subscribe down below and hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss a single video. Before talking about how stations and stops can be better, it's valuable to talk about what stations can be. Often the worst kind of station is somewhat ironically a station which exists only for moving people, such as the iconic Houston Amtrak station. Now to be fair, Houston was at least at one point thinking about moving their station, but it does raise the question, if you can just move your intercity rail station, it must not be that important. Which, I mean, for Houston, it's unsurprising that it isn't. I think that leads into one of the first things that a station can be, and that's an anchor for your city, the type of thing that can't easily be moved. The Amtrak station in Houston mainly exists because trains need a place to stop. Now, having a city anchoring station isn't something unique to Asia or Europe. New York Penn Station is a great example of this, but so is Toronto Union Station. Things are attracted to these stations, not the other way around. Now you don't need a grand station to make your neighborhood or city better. When I used to live near Burquitlam Station in Metro Vancouver, it was a great jumping off point for trips with friends or just to meet people in my community. A great station can be just as much a hub for your neighborhood as a hub for the city as a whole. Of course, I've mentioned Tokyo Station before on this channel, and one of the great features of that station is how it basically operates like a mall. There's tons of retail, different restaurants, all kinds of things to do while you're waiting, not very long most likely, for your Shinkansen. At the same time though, having retailers, restaurants, and the like in your station is a great way to pay for upgrades and upkeep, and also to build in a group of stakeholders who cares about things like footfall and keeping the station clean and in good shape. The last big thing I think about stations is they should be transport hubs, and it's amazing how often they actually aren't. Co-locating transportation services can make them all so much more useful, and it's amazing how many North American cities with decent transportation networks overall do not properly co-locate their main intercity hub with their main within-city hub. And sometimes there is a good reason for this. For example, with intercity buses, being close to a highway is useful, whereas intercity rail needs to be close to rails. This isn't always good though. In Toronto, I think we have a pretty illustrative case. The intercity bus terminal used to be a few subway stops away from Union Station a couple years ago, and I covered this on the channel so check out the video here, Toronto got its Union Station bus terminal, which relocated the intercity buses for the most part to Toronto Union Station, which not only is much closer to the center of gravity of the city, but also provides way better connections with intercity rail and local rapid transit. As it turns out to be a great station, you often want to think about what services you can provide to citizens, travelers, and the transportation network as a whole. Now, as I said before, not all transit stations or stops are grand, and there's a hierarchy of needs. Major stations should probably have enclosed waiting areas and shops and information booths, while smaller stations probably shouldn't or can't. A good place to start with a station is accessibility. A station should be accessible in the sense that you can actually get to it conveniently, but it also means accessibility for all. And of course, transit is naturally more accessible than driving, but there's no reason to limit who should be able to access transit services. Things like good audio and announcements, tactile wayfinding, and level boarding are all great ways to provide access for all. And if you don't have these things, you're likely not doing a good enough job serving the public. Another thing I think is incredibly important, especially in a rainy and often cold place like Canada, is weather protection. 
Having to wait outside for any period of time in rain or snow or just when it's cold is an unpleasant experience. So any station or transit stop where someone could reasonably be expected to wait for any serious amount of time should have weather protection. And even if you don't have to wait, any reasonably busy stop or station should also have weather protection. Now this doesn't even go to mention shade, which in my personal opinion is one of the most underappreciated forms of shelter or protection from nature. The prevalence of glass bus shelters in particular with transparent roofs is not good in my personal opinion. Shade is shelter. And especially in a changing climate, protection from the heat and sun is really important. Now, like many features of a station, the weather protection at a station should probably improve as the station becomes busier and more important to your network. If you have a fairly well-used station, you should probably be able to walk from the waiting room or from the station building to the platform without getting wet if it's raining. And if you have a really busy station, you should probably be enclosed in some way so that you can wait on the platform comfortably. Another really important thing to provide at a station is passenger information, be it for things like nearby landmarks, transit schedules, or more. Of course, digital screens, which I talk about a lot, are even better because they let you give people real-time information about delays and next vehicles, which is even more valuable if your service is less frequent. Keeping passengers feeling safe and secure is really important too. CCTV can be useful, but I like passive design elements. Things like better lighting, call buttons and sirens, as well as wide open sight lines can help people who traditionally feel vulnerable or marginalized feel more comfortable in transit facilities. Now, getting people onto buses or trains means helping them get tickets. And that means that your station should make it easy for you to buy tickets. Now, most stations, especially rail stations, have ticket machines, but it is shocking how often this is a really bad experience. Experience. The example that comes to my mind is Montreal with the Metro. Most stations have way too few, usually literally one ticket machine, which means that long lines form and it's just incredibly inconvenient. Punishing travelers to your city who don't already have a Metro card is not a good look and providing more ticket machines really isn't that hard. Of course, even better though at a busy station is a ticket and information booth. Of course, such a booth often only makes sense at the most used stations, but it can be a really way of improving people's passenger experience. It's often faster to have someone with experience on the system get the tickets for someone. And at the same time, while buying a ticket, people can ask their questions. Now, I mentioned how important being able to get to or access a station is, and I think it's critical that we try to prioritize local and environmentally friendly modes of transportation. This helps bring the local community into the discussion, which is good because again, it helps you have a stakeholder for your station facility. But this is also super useful because walking and cycling are a lot less expensive to provide for and a lot better for society as a whole. It's amazing how many stations in North America, for example, have really good access from cars, but will make you cross a really wide street or a large parking lot to get to the station if you're on foot. And that's not a reasonable experience. Cycling is a really big thing too. And I have a video up here about how cycling gives transit superpowers. Things like bike sharing and bike storage are really good amenities for a station. And adding bike paths or multi-use trails to allow people to access a station are a great way to create a little local bike network. Now, when public transit stops at a station, creating a seamless transfer is valuable. In Toronto, you usually don't have to tap again to transfer from bus to train. And at the same time, when you do have to transfer, you can usually do it in an enclosed facility without getting wet, something which a lot of systems, even with rail stations, don't do. At the same time, though, it's important to make transfers actually convenient. The Ottawa O-Train, Line 1 in particular, is a good example of putting bus stops way too far from the rail station by not designing the station with bus and rail transport in an integrated way. Now driving isn't ideal as I talked about in a video here, but at least in rural areas, providing the ability for people to park and ride or pick up drop off options is a good alternative to having people drive into the city itself. It's also important to remember that as a station becomes more busy, your connections become far more important. Something else which is really important is high quality waiting spaces. Now these should have seating space so that they're accessible to all and they should also have washroom facilities because that is another really important accessibility issue that we don't care about widely enough in many transportation systems. Now capacity is a balance. If you have a station which is too busy, it's uncomfortable for everyone. But if it's too quiet, people often feel uncomfortable or like there's a lack of security. You should also think about whether passengers waiting at your station, whether it's to get on a vehicle or to meet friends, have something to do with their time. And this is something that can be combined with capitalizing on massive footfall to provide high quality retail space or good community space. All of these things taken together can create a great station, along with things that I'll probably cover in future videos, like iconic architecture, historic features, and more. 
The station or stop is the interface point between the transit system and the transit rider, and making that interface smooth and comfortable will pay dividends. Thanks for watching.